to the Capital Discussions Roundtable. I'm Tom Lundermaker with Jim Riggio and our guest, Charles Cottle. Before we get started, it's a quick disclaimer that Capital Discussions is not a broker-dealer or an investment advisor. This presentation is for educational purposes only. We don't know your situation and have no way of knowing what level of risk is appropriate for you. We're not making any specific trade recommendations. The risk of loss in trading options can be substantial, so please be aware of all of your risks prior to placing any trades. Hypothetical computer simulated trades are believed to be accurately represented. However, actual profit or loss may vary due to market factors such as liquidity, slippage, and commissions. So with that out of the way, uh, I see Charles has his disclaimer up as well. Welcome, Charles. First time to the roundtable. We're uh, a lot of excited people to have you here today. Well, thank you. Welcome to the land of Oz, alternative hedging strategies. Some of you are familiar with the slingshot hedge. Dave's on and he's been loving it. I'd love to hear more stories with the slingshot. Dave, if you want to send me some stuff or contact me soon, let's catch up. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the structure and then show some pricing, how it's done for a credit. And that could be achieved almost any time. There's a little bit of an art to it. Then I'm going to compare it quickly to a covered right or what some people know as a buy right. Then I'm going to show some tabular readouts. In the modern day figure swim system, for example, and trade monster, they don't show the tabulars up and down like we used to have on the floor. All our risk metrics before we had any graphs or anything, really, we could just look at prices up and down and see all our Greeks and all our P&L and all that. So I'm going to do it as it relates to this, not only for the gains and losses, but also the cash flow, which is an interesting thing because when somebody's going to do a hedge, and I know that most of you don't do any hedging, but if you get some insights, you don't need the stock to, to hedge. But the shape of this thing is very compelling, especially in a market like we have right now, where people are trying to pick bottoms and there's a lot of back and forth and a lot of high implied volatility. So it's an interesting possibility. Um, I'm going to dissect it for you, and then I'm going to show some of the rolling options that you have for it. And I'm going to talk about the consequences of the exercise over here, about how much cash flow and what you can do and sort of like dilution or a, uh, it's like a reverse split on the stock. I'll explain that later. There's a quick offer and some performances I'll tell you about in, this, in the PDF that you have or should have been able to download. You have Chapter 9 from Options Trading and Hitting Reality, and that is on alternative hedging or hybrid hedging is the name of the chapter. And then Rocket to Quality was my, my personal experience during the crash of 87. That dates me. But I, I show dissection the way I used to do it before I learned butterfly dissection from Tony Saliba. It would have made a big difference, and that's why he made $4 million that day and why I was on the ropes because of a, a, a position that I inherited that you'll see in that discussion. So that's taking position dissection to the nth degree. But when you dial it back, like we talk about in slingshot hedge dissection, it's only a few strikes and it's, it's pretty easy. So let's get right to it. All right. So there's the shape and I've entered into the thinkorswim platform. You already own stock or you buy 200 shares trading at 5880 and we initiate this selling of four call spreads, the 60-65, and we buy two puts with the credit. And it's actually still a credit. Here are the prices. We're doing the whole thing for a 290 credit or $1.45 each because we're selling four of the calls for two bucks each, $800. We're buying out of the money calls, 65s for 60 bucks each or 0 0.60. And we're buying some protective puts down below in the 55 strike, $1.35 each, 270 bucks. Net it all out, 290. All right, so now here's a big, ugly spreadsheet of what we're going to be talking about. And you can zoom in at your end with the PDF. Go to the fifth page. Let me explain what's in these columns. Nothing real scary. It's just the tabulars to see what everything's doing. So you have the stock price in the beginning and the end. And we're looking at stock prices of 40 to 80. So that's 20 bucks up and 20 bucks down approximately from the mid strike. And we have the value of the stock, not the stock profit, but the value of the stock. 200 shares at 80 is $16,000. 200 shares at only in the lower left hand corner down here, $8,000 at 
200 shares at 40 bucks. Okay. Value of the put at expiration, by the way. So this is, uh, they're all worthless up here and they're, you know, a dollar in the money. They're a hundred bucks each. Okay. Even though we have two of them, but just, uh, just, these are just the values of the call. So we're not working with hockey stick graphs here at the moment. We're looking at the numbers, the pure numbers. Some people can't perceive uh, those hockey stick graphs or 2D or, or it's even 3D. Some people can't even understand 3D by looking at it. But there's other ways that uh, I'm working on being able to display that. And someday soon you'll get to see that. Um, value of the 60 call is next and the 65 call, what they do, what, what their value is at expiration. Now here's the gain and loss based on the price we paid for the puts, two of them of the 55s at each stock price. And what is the P&L of 260 calls? We only have that because of what if we did a covered right instead. And those are in these yellow columns are the covered right. The red columns with the red borders are the stock. And all the green is what I'm going to be talking about with the slingshot hedge, all the green cells, the borders. So then you have uh, 460 calls and 465 calls, the short ones and the long ones. Then the call vertical, how that does the P&L, the stock, what it makes. And here's the gain and loss on the cover, right? And here's the gain and loss on the slingshot hedge. And here is the cash flow. And we'll, we'll, we'll go back to these things, but I'm just showing you the cash flow of the covered right, the cash flow of the slingshot hedged. This is the risk of the stock when it's traded up there. Now it's, you got even more to lose, even though you have unrealized profit, you now should be working with the idea of what's it worth now, because that's what's at risk at any moment, not what you are eventually going to put on a tax return. And the covered right risk and the, and the uh, return on risk and all the slingshot metrics. So let's, let's get into it a little bit. Let's uh, go back for a moment to this chart. Now, this looks like a butterfly and a long call. Synthetically, and we'll see in the dissections down here, this is position dissector. comes with my course on position dissection. Later, I'll tell you about how you can get this for almost nothing. Here we go. You own two units of stock up here in the middle in column G. And we've bought two of these 55 puts. On the right side are puts. On the left side are calls. Current position is CUR. And we'll, we'll have some adjustments later. I'll pull up the actual spreadsheet. And we're selling this call spread, the 6065. So if you take out a conversion here, which this spreadsheet automa automatically does, synthetically, two by four by four. So that's a butterfly and... An extra call, two calls here, two by four by two plus an extra two. And that's why the graph looks like this. It would be a butterfly if we only had a two lot here at the 65 strike, we'd have synthetically a butterfly. So that, that would be a butterfly hedge to have a 200 by short four by long only two of the calls and long the puts as well, 255 puts. See, the 255 puts against the stock make it a synthetic call. So that's why you have long two synthetic calls at the 55 strike. I think most of you know a covered right is synthetically a short put. If we just sold 260 calls instead of four, as it says over here, here's reminding you of the prices we paid if you want to start doing some of the math and checking it in your head or whatever. If you sell two calls with this yellow CW, two CWs, two covered rights, we're selling two calls here versus selling four with a slingshot, all at two bucks. Well, if you do that by itself against stock, you're short the 60 puts synthetically for about $3.20 as it turns out. That's because the stock's already $1.20 in the money and two bucks for the call. All right, so we know that you have limited upside, and that's why you can only make the $640 maximum. See, the slingshot has unlimited gain potential. It starts out of the gate a little slow compared to the stock, but it's doing quite well. I mean, it's while the stock's making money for the covered right and the, the stock, the slingshot is losing in this little trough in here. But if the stock really takes off, like if this is 
say, was Apple when Apple is 95 and it shoots up to 130. I mean, it's leaving these strikes in the dust as far as the slingshot's concerned, and it's participating in that upside. Now, most stocks that grind higher, this would not be a good candidate for placing it this way, but you can place this peak anywhere at 55. It could be already in the money as far as that is concerned, and the extra call kicker can be at 60. All this could shift over. You want to place your strikes based on how the stock moves, where it's been, where it might be going, and that's where the rubber meets the road. That's pretty obvious what, what happens in P&L, but let's talk about the cash flow because with a covered right, too often people are pissed off when their call goes in the money, even though they're making money. They're angry that they have to buy their stock back or buy the call back. So what I'm illustrating here in this column right here is the cash flow of you're going to have to cough up this dough, even though you've won 640 max. You got a sh out of pocket, and some people don't have extra funds laying around. But here you could see the slingshot, the cash flow, is only $2,000. It's the bleeding stops because that's your vertical spread that you've sold four times that are going for five bucks now. And the maximum that you're going to have to buy anything back for will be this $2,000. So that's a nice feature, especially when some of these stocks have gone quite a bit and people have to like, oh my God, even though they won and they didn't win as much, right? Because had they left the stock alone and not hedged, the stock would have gone on to a big victory. The stock goes up to a lot of value that's getting stifled to some degree with the slingshot hedge and to a complete degree with the covered right. Whenever you're trading anything, you need to know the absolute risk. Not the risk if it moves 10%. What's the most it can lose? And you, you need to always keep aware of that and never get too comfortable with any formulas or algorithmics that tell you the, the probability of what you're going to lose. You want to know the exact amount. And because of the fact that synthetically this slingshot hedge is a butterfly and a call, that's all you have. That's the most you can lose on the slingshot, which is right here, $470. So synthetically, $175 is the cost of the butterfly, synthetically. Add that $175 to the call of $0.60, cents, the $0.65 call. That's $235. It's two spreads. $235 times two is $470. That's all you can lose. And based on that, cost and winning $3,000, for example, up at 80, that's a huge return on the risk that you had. Now, based on the capital that's involved, because you do own the stock and the slingshots made some money, it's 20, only 22% return on the slingshot hedge, where the stock made from 60 to 80, it made 33%. So you're not making as much, obviously, on the slingshot hedge, but look what you saved on the downside. The stock could lose all this money, and the slingshot, you know, you're, you're locked in at 470. So these aspects are really important to think of besides gain and loss. And here are some formulas from my book, by the way, the book is on sale right now. I've slashed it because I'm not printing it again. There's only a thousand, less than a thousand copies left, I think. I printed them because options, perception, and deception were going for $500 used in rare bookstores and on Amazon. So I crashed that market when I came out and printed these. But in this day and age, I'm not going to print anymore. So soon to be a collector's item, click here on this page and get it at Amazon. Let's talk about the consequences of exercise and, and why it's not a big deal with a slingshot as compared to the cover right. Here's the cover right. Here I go up to 100 and here the bottom is $60.01. Obviously, below here, you're not going to have any assignment or anything. You might want to exercise your puts if they get below 55, but I'm just talking about the nightmare side of, of the cash flow and how people should think of it in, in terms of like dilution, like in a reverse stock split. So 
In column B here, and here's an explanation of column B, is the price to cover or buy back the two short calls at their in-the-money value, the stock price in column A, minus $60, the contract. That's what this is. So up at $100, you'd have to cough up $8,000 because these two calls are $40 in the money, $8,000. And if you don't have the $8,000, you could sell eighty. dollars shares of your stock. And certainly there's tax consequences one way, long-term versus short-term capital gains. But so that, that plays into it that you make, got to make sure you're on, uh, aware of because it might not make sense for you to do that. So here we have 80 shares or 40% of the stock because the covered rights cost to buy the lost 200 shares in the open market at $100, that's $20,000. But you receive 12000 upon being assigned because that was the contract price, the strike price. So the difference is $8,000. So I want you to see over here with the slingshot, you just have to cough up $2,000. And if you had to sell stock, I mean, it'd be 20 shares, one-fourth of what $8,000 is. If you're not aware of this concept, I have all these columns that explain the, where the money comes from and where it's going to, and you can read about that. Uh, if this interests you on your own time. My friend and colleague, Eric Forsyth, puts it best. He says, position dissection is a way of changing the view of an options position to gain insight into the risks of the position and to increase one's ability to see adjustment ideas for the position. Similar to a gin rummy hand where you can rearrange your cards to make sets or straights, you can rearrange options in your position. It does not change what your position is in reality. It just gives you a new perspective to aid in risk analysis and seeing trade ideas. Okay, so here's the original trade. So now I'm looking at the nets here, over here in column T. I have cut out from chapter six in my book. Here's the text for it over here, and here is the explanation. So in this case, when you skip a strike, we have an 85 to 105 butterfly. It's named by the body. It's the 95 butterfly, at uh, 10 pointer. But another name up for it is the 85, 95, 105 butterfly. And here it is one by two by one, one by short two by one over here on the lower right side. And this consists of four baby butterflies embedded. Now it's, it's on one hand, it's another way to see your risk and to see the values of butterflies, which are quite smooth with a lot of time to go and start to get very sensitive to changes in the underlying. As time goes by or in low volatility periods, you know, you're going to look at it differently depending on where we are in the, in the cycle. But right here we have, if you say that it's a, a butterfly here, the 85, 90, 95, we're going to see that in a minute. It's also the 90, 95, 100 twice, and it's the 95, 100, 105. And this long one from the 85, if you bring over the sum to the far right, it's long one. If you take the 90 calls here, short two, and a long one here and a long one here, they net out to zero. So this is proof, if you bring it across, that there's short two, Originally, plus one, minus two, minus two, plus one is net short two, et cetera, et cetera. That's why this over here on the right column equals these embedded baby butterflies that could be traded out of. So let's say, okay, these aren't the same strikes as in the book, but we can easily make them the same strikes by going to the spreadsheet. You set the strikes by saying 85 and then 90, and it automatically makes the rest of your strikes. And I changed this pivot strike to 70 or 75 just so we could look at it the same way. Okay, so if we dissect this and we see that there's a two here, so I'll try putting a two here. And what that does is it sells 275, buys four here, and sells two here. So it sold the two that we had in this one, bought four here, and sold two additional. That's all it's doing right here, the opposite of this. Okay. And now 
we have four in the wing, let's take out four. And now we have two in the wing, let's take out two. So this becomes your inventory of eight baby butterflies. Now, if I didn't believe that, I could prove it by selling off two butterflies right here. Or one. You know, I could sell this one. It says I have two of the 8085. Well, what happens if it's we're at the money down at 80? It's it's propped up. There's a couple days to go. I want to harvest that because we might go back to 85 and I'll sell the 85 butterflies, the inventory of 85 butterflies that I have there. I can sell off two here. Let's do it. Let's make a trade. So let's sell two of the 75, 80, 85. Let's sell one in the morning. So I'll sell one minus one plus two minus one. All right, well, I have to undissect this because it's showing me net. I have short butterfly here, but that's because there's only one here now. And boom, now my inventory is seven butterflies. I have two naked calls as the kickers, and I've sold that off. Now, if I want to sell the other one off, I'll sell a call side one. Just uh, maybe it was a better price at the moment, even though they're synthetically the same, uh, except for dividends and things like that that could be involved. So... Read Chapter 8, especially if you're an insomniac. It helps, puts you to sleep. That has all the dividend stuff in my book. All right, so now I don't have that. I mean, if I, I'm confused and I don't get this, I'll just clear it all and start dissecting all over again. And I say, oh, here's four here, because I see four there. Four, just enter a four there. Body, a wing to body. Oh, here's two. And boom, there's my six that remain. So that's position dissection as far as butterflies, but it also has calendar dissection here. So let's say, well, you know, these are getting pretty weak. These, this two, two of these 95 calls, they're, they're, they don't have much firepower anymore. They, they don't have much gamma. They're almost toast. I'm going to roll them to the next month. So rolling them to the next month, I would buy the 95s, two, sell two 95s here, minus two, and now I have my two lot net here. So I have my butterflies here and I have my two here. Now, if there's a lot of time to go, unlike two days ago, and I've done this for whatever reason, they just got screaming cheap and it was a good time to roll it. I can, ca I can take out this calendar by saying I have two calendars here. And now I can manage my position all as front month with two options that are still in the hopper, you know, two calls or I can look at it as two calendars and when we get to the 95 strike or close to that or if vowels getting pumped up in the back the Vegas more sensitive in the Jan I can sell out that and I'm back to the front month or I can even go to the next month if I make the pivot strike 85 by the way you could see that it's an iron butterfly so that's why iron butterflies aren't better than regular butterflies as a trader on the floor, I would go on one side of the pit where, when this wasn't known and get, act like I was representing a customer and I would be going back and forth to the phone bank, lifting up the receiver and talking back and forth with a dial tone because there really wasn't anybody on the phone. This was going to be a trade for myself. And I was acting like I was shopping it. And I asked for a market on the call butterfly, for example. And I'd leave, go act like I was on the phone. Then I'd sneak into the pit. It was a big pit, the bond options pit. And I would go to the other side and ask for the market on the iron butterfly or the put butterfly. Because if you do a call butterfly versus a put butterfly, it's two boxes. If you do an iron butterfly versus a call butterfly, it's a put butterfly. And, and they only had to be off a tick on my, my requests, and I could do a, a 2,000 lot and make 2,000 ticks off of these guys. And I did several times uh, for a few weeks until they realized, because it was the same house, they were partner traders. It was CRT, Chicago Research and Trading. And their guys were what we called sheet monkeys. They were tied too much to the sheets. And sometimes 
uh, with rounding, there could be anomalies in the sheets. And a tick, $15 is 62 and a half cents. A thousand times is 15 grand for just fooling around on the phones like that and playing with each side of the crowd. I could do both sides. Well, somebody looked at all the trades upstairs because they were the same company. And they go, this guy Cottle, he's trading, he's trading with us both ways in and out. And he's walking away with a long box. And he has the early exercise potential too. Oh, my God. Those guys... Downstairs, they're not allowed to trade with Cottle. So the next time I walked in there, this is how I found out, they go, you got to call upstairs. Call upstairs. Yeah, you got to call the guys at our trade desk. Why? Because they won't let us trade with you anymore. So that little uh, windfall disappeared after a while. Uh, So here I'll show you how that works. So let's just go to, let's go deal with straight butterflies and... Let's just go with two here and two here. And then let's just sell two here. Selling this butterfly, buying four, and selling two in the put side. Well, this is two boxes. Two by four. What's what's this here for? Oh, there's still 200 underlying. Two underlying. I'll take that out. Okay, so this is just along the 85-95 box which might be a good early exercise box. That's a chapter three thing. With interest rates the way they are, this is no longer available. And it might never be available because some of the things I read sound like there's never going to be interest rates anymore. But that remains to be seen. And then here is the 7585 box. So I think I've said everything I plan to talk about today. Certainly, I imagine this has raised a lot of questions. So uh, maybe I talked a little fast. I'm done a little early, but we can open it up to questions about anything about standard listed options, except the VIX. I don't get the VIX. So I'll leave that one out. I think it's totally manipulated market. And I just want to just show you, here's the chapter that's in your PDF, chapter six on wing spreads. So it has uh, a lot of things on position dissection and butterflies and big giant butterflies. And then you also have this, which is the crash of 87 saga and my thousands and thousands of contracts at many different strikes and different accounts. It was uh, pre-good software. And we did a lot of things by hand, how I did ratio spread dissection. And here's my old dissecting software that I used to use and better ways to get out of this thing. So it's a, it's a good lesson to dissect. And the other thing is I have lots of archives. It's like a documentary. It's an adjustamentary. 300 hours of video of live trading, live coaching, going through positions that all people like you have and how we manage them, some for many months and rolling and dissecting. And that's all at my websites. I guess that's pretty much it, if, unless you have some questions. Yeah, a couple. Uh, Bodan Fedori said it's great to hear from you. He still remembers you from the Florida oh, yeah. mm-hmm. trade yeah. dollar options. Yep, yeah, I remember. Yes, nice to nice to have you here. Uh, let's see. Um, some people were asking about the, how is the VIX being manipulated. Do you have any comments on that? Well, I mean, like I said, I don't. I watch it every day. I don't trade it, but I just think that. It's kind of messed up when you're having 20, 30, 40, 50 point moves in the SPX and, and the VIX is going down just because the stock's going up in, in a certain day, you know. So I think that it's a tail wagging the dog thing. I think there's a lot of people who are able to push it one way or the other in the futures market, big hedge funds and stuff. And I think that they kind of wag the dog a lot with it. But I don't have very much else, very scientific to back my statement up. Okay. Um, Sasha asks, sometimes the index options data does not come in, uh, although no future binary event is due, and the trader being neutral on Dalton Vega, could you explain, please, why that happens? Well, I, I don't think I understand the question. Yeah, I'm trying to reread it. Index options data does not come in, although no future binary event is due. So I guess it sounds like the market makers are holding the theta. And I've heard uh, some M3 traders, a John Locke-style uh, butterfly, um, they, they don't get the theta coming in when it 
normally you would think it would. I think because events are kind of heating up. I'm not familiar with Locke's work, but I will tell you just from like a, a, Mon a Friday to Monday, you know how they hammer the premium on Friday to take out all the weekend's premium, but on Monday, it's not out. That's only because the volatility went up enough to offset it, not giving this free money to the people who shorted it. So, you know, there's Vega, right? So uh, there's no guarantee. You, you, you won on Theta, but you lost on Vega in that, in, in, in that scenario where you're selling it on Friday. Market opens up unchanged, yet they're not crushing anything because it was pre-crushed from the close. Uh, on, on, they start selling it on Thursday, you know, for the weekend because uh, they know they're going to, you know, hold, prop it up on Monday not to give anybody their free money. That's uh, just something I experienced many, many times. Um, I don't see any other questions, so uh, maybe you can just show people on your website where they would go if they want to um, learn more about, say, position dissection or you know, how to get the, the tool, because it, it does look interesting. Yeah, I just clicked this uh, small monthly annual subscriptions for access to the archives that were once sold for over $10,000. Here's my old pricing with $10,000, all my stuff, videos, courses. There's about 56 hours in courseware. Some go through the book. Then some are specifically about certain strategies explained in ways other than the book and from real uh, live trades and things. And then there was an Ask the Risk Doctor series of 18 different videos with uh, PDFs to illustrate the answers. And it comes with uh, some software, the, the spreadsheet that I was just using, Position Dissector comes with that, the ex and also for uh, some technical analysis, uh, diametric grids that I use. And um, then there is uh, some live things that we did, and these are all real trades, so there, it has charts, it has proposed trades, it has real trades, it has adjusting, and this is where there's like 300 hours of uh, video archives to live vicariously through those who came before you, and it's just a low monthly access for $191 a month. Um, I think there's a, a new offer that uh, my web guys were working on. Uh, making the first month only $91. So I don't know where that link is right now, but if you email me, charles at riskdoctor.com, or you'll see that at the bottom of the pages of the book, the chapter that I gave you, that it's there, or you save some money with the annual fee. But you could, you know, quit after the first month and have had it for less than half price, and you get to download the spreadsheet and keep the two spreadsheets for Diamondetrics and for Position Dissector, and there's also a copy of my book in PDF of this one. But if you click this one, it takes you just to Amazon uh, to get it for 50 bucks. I just marked it down. There's like only 1,000 left, and uh, I won't have to pay Amazon's inventory bill if those are sold. <laughs> It's a great book, too. I, I bought a copy of it years ago, and it's, it's uh, really nicely bound, great uh, charts in it. It's, uh, it's not an easy read, but it's definitely worth having on your bookshelf. Yeah, thanks. Um, it was a lot of fun writing it and, uh, and reiterate, you know, I, it was originally uh, Options Perception and Deception for Market Makers Only. And that was when there really wasn't much retail able to click into things. And then it dawned on me that, wow, we should open up a brokerage firm that allows spreading. Because when I was trading in the 90s from England in the late 90s, you couldn't do any spreads. You couldn't buy a, a call option, for example. If you even were going to leg something, the premiums were just... I wrote a little business plan about an options brokerage firm featuring spreading. Margin requirements and volatility was really high. And uh, margins are really high, so that I had I was already shopping it to E Trade and places like that. I uh, Meritrade, Schwab. I had a meeting with a CEO in um, of E Trade in England, the UK CEO, and he said this these ideas are too American. So I had Tom 
uh, one of my best friends at the time, and, and I said, hey, proofread this for me. I'm going to send it out to some CEOs. He says, we could do this. So we, we started what he came up with the name Think or Swim. And as uh, we get into it a little while, and he says, the first version won't have spreads. I go, hey, no, 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 no. Hey, we, we need spreads. He goes, Charles, although I am inclined to agree with you that uh, spreading would be cool, um, the CBOE tomorrow is having their one-year anniversary from the last time there was a spread trade done on the floor. He was joking, right? So I said, look, Tom, if you don't build spreading, I'm out of here. I'm going to go shop my deal somewhere else. We're not doing it. And um, he says, okay, we'll do it. So and it became like 90% of what we what Thinkorswim did with spreads. And it was amazing because we had it built before they, the, the, the exchanges can even accommodate a spread order. So the day they threw the switch, okay, we were firing away like crazy because we were already filling spread orders through, if people know the name of night trading, K-N-I-G-H-T, we would send our orders electronically to them, but then they would disseminate it to the floor through their through their system, and it would go into the open outcry before the CBOE allowed that. So, a little bit of history. Very cool. Uh, Raul asks, uh, what's your best strategy? And I would maybe modify that. If you were going to put some trades on today, what kind of strategies would you be looking at? Given in this high volatility environment where anything can happen, I think because volatility is high, I'd be looking for wide butterflies, basically. I don't do anything naked short. So I would do that, and then I would probably position wings somewhere, you know, somewhere, not necessarily at the long strike, but further out because there are some high implied volatilities for those protective wings. And I'm not saying for protection, but just because it's going to be a great price. If you're doing an iron, you're going to get a huge credit. If you're going to do an outright long, synthetically just take out the box the difference between the strike and the body it's going to be a very cheap trade right i might do extra wings but not necessarily two wings for two butterflies i might put one wing on each side a lesser quantity or even at further out strikes extra wings could be put if i'm bullish or if i'm bearish in bounce territory like for example a gold mining stock or something like that where i have a tendency to be biased to the upside, because it's a battered sector, or oil, something like that. Or if I was bearish on a certain sector, I might put my wing down below, right? Or I can do one of each. Now, normally, a W shape is an expensive transaction because of the skew and everything, but I might put my protection just further out, depending on the price. But I would think that butterflies, by and large, because we are up here in, in, in high volatility levels. Some people think that this is going to be the norm for quite some time. You know, there's a lot of things going on with the Federal Reserve and central banks where there's, you know, just been a lot of uh, plunge protecting. And they seem like they can go on forever and ever and ever and keep supporting the market. The Yellen slash Bernanke slash Greenspan put might be a little bit lower than at the money, which it usually was. We used to have days where if the Dow was down 200, rally back up and be up on the day in the buy dip market. And now we, we seem to be in a sell rally market. You know, so you get these days where it's up big and then they crush it and it's down on, on the day. It, there's a real tug of war going on here. There's a lot of geopolitical things happening. Uh, and so I think volatility is here to stay. The, the answer that I gave you about this position here is like, I don't know which way it's going to go, and I might have a wing one side or the other. But normally, I'm bullish or bearish, and I just try to keep it simple with verticals, you know, bull spreads and bear spreads. I'd like to be on the short side of premium, so I would have a tendency, if I'm bullish, to sell a just like a slightly out-of-the-money put spread, meaning the put I sell might be at the money or just out of the money and they put I buys further out, that's because I'm bullish against a support line or a 200-day moving average or a death cross or whatever, and I'm bearish, I'll sell a call spread. And so I just 
like to go for singles and doubles and not home runs. And I like to have limited risk. And I like their my position to have a built-in stop. And I might put a stop in, a mental stop on the vertical. You never want to put in stops in an options market because you can get filled at nightmarish prices. And a lot of things can trigger those. Don't use stops. Have your positions be built-in stops. Then you never have to worry about it. And they can't carry you out. You have to play small enough so they can't scare you out given positions that you have. You got to just set yourself up for maximum bruising and not losing limbs and keep it really simple. And, and I use my diamondetric charts. Diamondetrics, if you haven't seen any of that work, I'll just pull up the software for a second just so you can see what it does. It's, it's pretty simple taking and overlaying a chart and just stretching these lines or wick zones and moving things around to position the grids to identify the trends symmetrical trends. And so it's just bringing symmetry and I try and find a likely intersection. Then I just stretch this thing around so that there's no violations and move this and try and engulf everything and try and capture the symmetry. And this wide range starts to go down in the same pattern you'll see. I use two-year charts personally, and I use logarithmic charts. You can see this $5 difference, 65 to 70, is a lot wider than from 135 to 140. It almost looks sort of like GAN, but there's the Excel version. You could play with it when you join my archives, Risk Doctor, Option Flicks, Bundle. Here you could change the colors of the wick zones or the up and down lines. You can make the center lines or the wick zones thicker. You can remove them one or the other. So there's a lot of flexibility. Just for fun, I added a couple of other things I've been fooling around with. I, I live in Sedona, Arizona now, enjoying some of the more leisure things in life. And I have a, a local friend who's really talented, and he recorded this song right here. He was able to get me the live recording from Count Basie at the Sands in Las Vegas in 1965 and reduced Frank's voice so I could come in with my words there. And then I wrote another one to a Billy Idol. It's a lock video, not a rock video, a lock video. So you can either <laughs> laugh at it or enjoy it, whatever. But thank you for the opportunity of being here. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, one, one quick question before you go. Uh, sure. What's the difference between Risk Illustrator and the Position Dissector? Right. Uh, well, Risk Illustrator has all the Greeks tied to it. It's got a model tied to it, and it's got graphs to it. It shows you the Greeks on all your sub-baskets. It shows you the Greeks on your limited risk stuff. It'll show you the Greeks on your naked risk stuff and help you identify that and show you where all the money is, where, how much money's tied up in butterflies, how much tied up in the synthetic leftovers, etc. So let's tie Risk Illustrator to Diamondetrics. This wasn't included in the live presentation. So here is our Diamondetric grid. I've, I've showed this green channel now on here and this down channel that's symmetrical with it in the red. And then they intersect. And right at expiration, the November expiration, I've made this blue and yellow oval here, identifying the top should be 115 and the bottom 110. Now it's a downtrend, so it could break, right? So I thought I'd get a different type of position for this, and I bought some extra kickers just to illustrate how you would do that, what we talked about earlier. And so let me pull this side by side. So here's Risk Illustrator. So what I've done is I've given us the 100, 105, 115, 120 condor 10 times, and then two 95, 125 strangles. The pivot strike defaults to 110, so it breaks everything out of the money from there. After it takes out a box, a $5,000 box, here's what it is synthetically. Even though we did the trade, the iron for a credit minus what we paid for the strangle, the strangle is left over down here. It's $545. Here are the prices up here of all the calls, all the puts. Then here's some butterfly prices. And we're buying 10 butterflies that are $0.67, cents, $0.76, cents, and $0.72. Cents. And that's what the underlying at 110.30. And I've, here we go with uh, 30 total baby butterflies. And here they are in the graph down here. There's the three baby butterflies, the red, white, and blue. And here's the strangle in yellow. And here's the whole package in here as the raw position in magenta. And then this is a giant condor, three baby butterflies in a row is this gray condor. 
So here are the Greeks down here. 15 deltas, 6.48 gamma, etc. Taking out the butterflies, that's short 30 deltas and the, the strangles long 15 deltas. So it's pretty neutral and you can see it's long premium on the remnant and it's short premium on the butterfly. And so it, here's your separated Greeks. Here's your money broken down into 10 butterflies, $673, which is a 67 rounded and 758 is a 76 cents and the 717 is 72. And you can see that the total money on the table is this 2148 is how much you can lose on the butterflies and $545 on the strangle. So you have a total of 26. Fantastic. And I think uh, Dave Stewart, uh, he was a professional pianist and I think he worked with some of the Basie folks. So um, always nice to see music uh, at the bottom there. That's great. <laughs> Nice, nice to have Dave. Yeah, uh, tell me if I'm violating any copyright laws. <laughs> <laughs> so Charles, I can't thank you enough. I really appreciate you coming on board, and uh, hopefully, uh, people in our community will take advantage of some of your offers. They look really great. Great, great. Well, thanks for having me, and we'll try and do something again in the future. You bet. Thanks again, everyone, and uh, we'll see. I'll get this recording online as soon as I can. So thanks again, Thank Charles. you, Charles. Hopefully you'll come back soon. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Take care, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.